Let's talk about some things to keep in mind when complying with App Store requirements. When you go through the submission process for each App Store, check the official guidelines in depth for both Apple and Google. Now, there's a lot of overlap in each store's requirements, so here we'll go through what you should aim for in terms of best practices to increase your chances of your app being accepted on the first attempt. The first thing to keep in mind is content. Apple and Google both have certain standards for content in apps in their app stores. Apps should not have any content that can be deemed objectionable, offensive, risk physical, mental or emotional harm, puts users in danger, or encourages any behavior that may do so. Content should not facilitate or promote illegal activities and should not exploit or abuse users. This also covers user-generated content with app publishers needing to take steps to prevent users from sharing any content that goes against guidelines as well. Now the next thing to keep in mind is minimum functionality. Apps need to meet a minimum level of functionality to be accepted to the app stores. The most notable example of this is an app that is just a simple copy of a website with nothing else added. Apple and Google, but particularly Apple, want to see an app-like experience, not a repackaged website. This is particularly important to note if you're converting an e-commerce store into an app. And it's vital to add some small touches to make your app feel like an app, such as mobile navigation features, a native tab menu, and push notifications. Now, the next thing you're going to want to keep in mind is design and performance. Apps should also meet a minimum standard for design, both UI and UX, and performance. If an app is an incoherent mess, if it has broken or incomplete features, it will likely be rejected. The same goes for if it crashes constantly. If it's riddled with bugs, or if it causes the user's battery life to drain particularly fast, then you probably won't get approved. Next thing you want to focus on is data security and privacy. Apps handling of data is particularly important today for both app stores. The app needs to be secure on how it handles data, how the data is collected, and how it's used with a user's permission. The next thing to keep in mind is monetization. Both platforms have regulations regarding how in-app payments work, such as in-app purchases, subscriptions, and paid app purchases. These payments generally need to happen through the Apple and Google payment systems, and users can't get around this, avoiding payment fees, taking their payments off platform. E-commerce apps are exempt for this, however, so for both Apple and Google, payments for goods and services used outside the app, such as physical product sales, should use an external payment method, such as credit cards. The next thing you want to focus on is IP, deception, and impersonation. Apps must not violate any intellectual property laws, and they shouldn't represent a relationship with a person or brand unless they have the right to do so. Both platforms are also looking for if there's any malware or harmful software. Apps should not contain any malware, viruses, or software that may harm users or their devices. This includes harvesting or transmitting information without a user's knowledge, and software that is abusive, harmful, or deceptive. Now here are some common pitfalls and things to avoid. If you want to cut down from the time from submitting your review to going live, watch out for a few common issues that cause apps to be rejected and have to be resubmitted. The app stores are also looking to see if you have any incomplete apps or information. Don't submit beta builds, partial builds, or anything else that could cause your app to appear incomplete. Also ensure that you've got all the necessary information and metadata required for your submission. You also want to check on broken links and placeholder text. Make sure all links work and you don't have any placeholder text left anywhere in the app. It should work exactly as you intended for real users. Make sure you meet minimum functionality of your app. Don't submit a direct copy of your website. This is probably the most common reason for apps to be rejected. Apple specifically mentions that your app should have features, content, and UI that elevate it beyond a repackaged website. Now, Google Play is a bit more lenient in this area, but they still don't like apps that have very little utility or value. If you use MobiLoud, you can be safe knowing that we found the sweet spot in web to app conversions that adds enough to get your app approved while maintaining what makes your website great. Make sure that you don't have any poor UI or UX. This is likely to be an issue if your website is not optimized for mobile before you start. If your app looks bad or it's just awkward to use, it's likely to get rejected. This is especially true if you're trying to convert a website that's not responsive and optimized for mobile screens. Next is not giving reviewers the ability to test your app. Many publishers have lost valuable time having to regather and resubmit their app because they didn't provide the necessary information, permissions, and resources to allow full testing of their app. This includes giving an explanation of non-obvious features and how to test them, and creating a demo account for testers to review account-specific features. And last but not least, mentioning other platforms. Finally, don't mention any competing platforms in your App Store listings. This is mostly an issue when submitting to the iOS App Store and often results in app submissions being rejected because the publisher mentioned Android or Google in their listing. 
Now, how do you submit your app? For the iOS App Store, you'll submit everything through your App Store Connect account, including all information, metadata, and listing details. When you're ready to submit your app, hit add for review. Make sure this is a full, complete, release-ready version of your app. For the Google Play Store, submit your app through the Google Play Console. Go to the All Apps tab and hit Create Application. From here, you'll give your app a title, provide information about your app's content, category, tags, and other details. And finally, you'll upload the files of your app. In the Google Play Store, you can upload a beta version of your app for closed or open testing, or you can go straight to submitting a final version for review. Thank you for watching today's video. I hope you got some value out of it. And as always, my name is Jamarco, and I will see you in the next video.